Hey, so I want to talk about this whole idea of negative self-talk, destructive thoughts, toxic thoughts, and the self-talk that you constantly have going on. Maybe it's just like a racket. And it seems like, you know, um, a constant old record that keeps playing and it's the same tunes over and over again. Well, here we are in Newport, Corona Del Mar, where I grew up. And at 16, when I started my business on a bike, um, this is where I threw myself into entrepreneurship, had this selfish ambition, this drive, this constant growing the brand and growing the business and wanting to upgrade myself to try to get things as stable and secure as possible. Why? Because when everything happened, the traumas of my childhood back to when my parents split up, when they went their own way, but then also I accepted the Lord when I was nine. There is this kind of commitment, this vow that I made. And I, I basically said, I'm never going to be my dad and I'm going to prove that I have what it takes. And I'm going to prove to myself and the world and God that I can actually do this. I was driven by success. I was driven by constant um, achievement overachieving to the point by 28 years old, I'm sitting in there completely self-consumed, so sick of myself and so sick of the world and everything that was in it. I became super cynical. I became super upset. I was punchy. I was angry, depressed, anxiety. It was constant. And that's where I hit that singular of complexity. So I turned myself in. I gave myself up and went into a massive season of not only, um, you know, therapy and getting help and gleaning wisdom off of others. But I came to the realization that later on in life, I was going to have to reconcile with Mr. Polish. And here he is. Mr. Polish was the persona that I created unconsciously that um, were the three individuals that I had created out of self-preservation and protection in my youth to help me survive through those seasons. Here's what it looks like. Uh, one was the imposter, one was the false self, but ultimately the one that became the Pharisee. So imagine like these three buddies, these three characters that I created to help me survive through this future of instability and the unknown of uncertainty. Now, the amazing thing is you might be encountering that as well. There's a lot of negative self-talk and these, these messages and these lies. Well, here's the interesting thing. Those three characters, I want you to imagine like a rim, like this layer, like a cake layer of, of thoughts in your brain. And I believe that if you got to get your mind right and keep your game tight, you got to get this mental hard drive rooted in truth and understanding so that you can execute and total strength in all your decisions and everything you're doing. But it's not gonna happen if you are listening and basing all your decisions and choices off of lies. So here's what it looks like. Imagine those three, the imposter, the false self, and the Pharisee, and this right self-righteous, everything according to my own standards way of living. And so I've got that rim. Well, who's on the outside here? You've got the enemy and the world. Well, here's the thing. The enemy and the world doesn't need to advertise directly to me. The Spirit of God lives in me, but here's, who's, here, here's who the enemy is basically sending message to, my false self. And my false self of Mr. Polish, that guy, he's just like, you know what? He's kicking his own butt. He's, he's out of the game. He's so preoccupied and self, self-regurgitating on lies that it's taking him out of the game. He's unfruitful. We're winning. Well, what happens if you get rid of Mr. Polish and you get Mr. Polish remover? It is the truth. What is it? It is the true, authentic self. I love it in Abba's Child when Brendan Manning says, man, every single time I was having frustrations of not having a great connection with God, it was because I kept sending my false self into the throne room. And God is looking at that false self going, I don't know who this guy is. I don't have a relationship with him. Send in my true, genuine, authentic, true son. So my hope and prayer for you today is this. Can you get Mr. Polish remover? Remove the lies. Why and how? Because your true authentic self needs to live. You, your true identity in Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The enemy's native tongue is lies. And if you're listening to those lies from your false self, re renounce it, rebuke it, get rid of it, Ask for forgiveness to God. Ask for forgiveness to other people. Ask for forgiveness to yourself. 
but forgiving yourself is one of the biggest ways to freedom. Go back, do the damage control and disarm the bombs from the past, reconcile those moments with yourself. I listed them on paper. I did business with each one. I said goodbye to the false self. I said goodbye to the imposter. I said goodbye to the Pharisee. And here's what I want to forewarn you on. Here's the biggest warning, dude. Listen to this. Be careful of the biggest blind spot that after you continually do this business each and every day of removing the false self, that you do not inherit a new identity. And here it is. Do not become even a more self-righteous Pharisee. Be mindful of that. It is not your self-righteousness, cockiness. You are now rooted in Christ in your true identity of your, uh, your confidence that is a righteous one in God's confidence of who God's called you to be, not in your own definition of your self-righteousness. So this is, this, is, this is where the rubber meets the road, man. And I'm telling you what right now, watch the lies, listen to the self-talk that's happening, recognize, is this tearing me down? Is this building me up? Is this moving me towards my relationship with God? Or is this condemning me? Guilt leads to condemnation. Conviction leads to action. Those are a couple great ways that you can take a listen to that. So right now, ask those, are you being ran by lies and negative self-talk? Or are you rooted in truth in your true identity and you have the protocol of how to, how to disarm and remove Mr. Polish? Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear.